Hi there, welcome to this in-depth video on the anatomy of your hand. In this video we cover all the bones in your hand as well as the intrinsic muscles of your hand. If you're looking for a video of the anatomy of your upper arm and your forearm, also make those videos and you can find them in the description. If you meet me for the first time, my name is Raoul. I'm a final year medical student from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get started. Before I start, I always do a little disclaimer. This video is meant purely informational. This is not medical advice. And if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. And this brings us to the slides. The hand bones can be divided in several groups. First of all, you have your carpal bones then your metacarpus and then you have phalanges, which can be divided in the proximal, middle and distal phalange. I will now start with the carpal bones. The carpal bones connect your hand to your arm and they consist out of eight individual bones, which makes up two rows, a proximal row and a distal row. In the proximal row, you have the scaphoid, the lunatum, the triquatum and the pisiform bones. And in the distal row, you have the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate and the hamate. Those bones are connected with individual ligaments, but it goes too much in detail to discuss this right here. What you need to know though, is that they be kept in place by those ligaments and that also certain muscles of your forearm attach at those carpal bones. However, the ligaments that hold your phalanges in place are way simpler and those I will discuss. First of all, you have collateral ligaments in the joints of your finger. You have a proximal and a distal interphalangeal joint. So those are stabilized by collateral ligaments. You also have a volar ligament or a volar plate, which is on the flexor side of each ligament. And you can see that on this picture as well. It prevents the finger from hyperextension and holds it in place. And lastly, you also have a transverse metacarpal ligament that gives strength and stability to this joint. And this brings us to the intrinsic muscles of the hand. In the thumb we have the tenor muscles, which make up the belly of your thumb. Then we have the hypertenor muscles in your pinky. Those are innervated by the ulnar nerve. The tenor muscles in your thumb are innervated by the median nerve. Then we have the interossei muscles between your fingers. Dorsally we have four of them between those four fingers and they help you to abduct, so spread your fingers. They make this movement. Then volally, we have three of them, in the pinky, ring finger, and in your index finger. Those help you to shut your fingers, close your web spaces. Because both the interossei muscles are innervated by the ulnar nerve. And then lastly, we have the lumbrical muscles, which help the interossei muscles, and also lead to flexion in your metacarpal joint. Those are innervated by the median nerve and by the ulnar nerve as well. The tenor muscles in your thumb consist out of three muscles. The abductor pollicis brevis, which helps you to abduct your tongue, and the flexor pollicis brevis, which helps you to flex it, and then the opponent's pollicis, which is used to touch the fingertips of your other fingers. So in your hypotenor, so in your pinky, you also have an opponent's digiti minimi that helps you touch the tongue. And you have a flexor digiti minimi bravius and you have an abductor digiti minimi. This was my short recap on the anatomy of your hand. We talked about the carpal bones, the metacarpal ones and your phalanges. We also talked about intrinsic muscles and the ligaments. I hope you learned something. Feel free to subscribe for more upcoming videos and as always, see you next week. Bye bye.